Hey everybody, this is Cozy Cat ASMR. We've got first edition Marvel Star Wars comics printed many, many years ago. Um, my wife and I were actually thrifting and found these um, at a flea market. The first edition and the second edition of Star Wars. Here's Star Wars, an official adaptation of the 20th Century Fox blockbuster movie. The greatest space fantasy film of all. A film by George Lucas. Um, the Star Destroyers chasing it down. With Darth Vader on it. And as you can see, uh, we've got um, the stormtroopers busting down the doors after they've tractor beamed the freighter over. And then you actually see uh, some really cool artwork of Luke as he kind of catches the morning sky before the uh, encounter with the droids. And you can see that he's kind of hopping into his land speeder. And then we're quickly transitioning back to the to Leia's ship where Darth Vader uh, has his first entrance. Um, and is just tearing apart the guards. Looks like he's choking one here. Big surprise there. And then a uh, famous line here, find the passengers of this vessel, I want them alive. <laughs> and then James Earl Jones voice. And then we've got uh, R2 here in the awesome scene in the movie where Leia slips in the uh, data on the Death Star. And C-3PO, clueless as usual, is kind of like, what's going on? What are we going to do? And, and then here we go. We've got them uh, getting ready to go in the escape pod. And then we've got Leia encountering the stormtroopers. As they chase her down, she manages to get one of them, and then get stun raid, as we all know from the movie. And we'll move over here, where we've got, uh, I think, Luke back on the land speeder, and the sound effect, Shuri. Looks like Luke is, yeah, talking with his friend, uh, Biggs, I think. And then... Um, they're just kind of having back and forth banter. It's like in like maybe some sort of cantina or something. And Tatooine, probably in Mos Eisley. And here we are with Darth Vader capturing Princess Leia. Leia says, I am a member of the Imperial Senate on a diplomatic mission. <laughs> and then Darth Vader says, you are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. <laughs> and uh, and they're searching the rest of the ship. And of course, R2 and C-3PO have already landed on Tatooine and escaped with the data. And here is uh, a quick interaction with, I think, Jawas, who immediately capture R2 after C-3PO and R2 separate. As they can't stand each other, apparently. Like I said, this interaction between Luke and his friend Biggs, I believe. And here we are. With, on page 9 here. Members of the Imperial Command. And... Here is Grand Moth Tarkin and Darth Vader entering the room. You can see, in, as in that scene in the, A New Hope, the movie, uh, they're at the round table and they're discussing what to do about the rebels. And here, one of the first times we, I think, ever see the Force used in Star Wars, uh, Darth Vader is Force choking. One of the Imperial, gosh, what are they, Admirals, I guess? And here we have uh, both 3PO and R2 
and I think it's called like a land cruiser from the Jawas. Um, and here they are, I think, headed towards Luke's and his uncle Elwin's house in Tatooine. And of course, we all remember the scenes where Luke and his uncle Elwin are shopping for droids from the Jawa sal salvagers. Um, and I love this line, why I stick my neck out for you is beyond my capacity. <laughs> Love-hate relationship between R2 and C-3PO never ceases to entertain. And here we have Luke when he's getting the droids cleaned up and experiences Snap, the uh, hollow projection of Princess Leia. And of course she says, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you are my only hope. And here we have uh, Luke speaking to his Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, kind of about his discovery. I think his aunt and uncle, as you can see, are very animated. <laughs> uh, his uncle uh, kind of wants him to drop it, stay away from that old wizard, because uh, he asks about old Ben, his friend, who we all know is Obi-Wan Kenobi. They're still talking, and Luke kind of storms off, because understandably his aunt and uncle don't want him to get involved at all with Obi-Wan. And here, uh, it looks like C-3PO is kind of jolting, and it's where you know, Luke finds out that R2 is missing and goes out on a chase in his land speeder. And here we're seeing the stormtroopers continue their search on Tatooine for the droids. I love how they pick up, just the, the stormtroopers pick up just a little fragment of metal or something and they know immediately it's droids. And then we've got these sand people. Who I always wonder, especially after watching Boba Fett, if there's a chance they might be slightly misunderstood. If anyone's uh, played Knights of the Old Republic, um, that gives you a really in-depth look at uh, the Sand People. But you actually sympathize for the Sand People a little bit, um, as their planet was once a lush uh, garden world that turned sour and became a, a desert planet. Then you have um, colonizers basically come and try to steal natural resources from it, and the sand people did not like that very much, and after thousands of years, they still have conflicts with what they see as colonizers. But anyways, we'll keep moving here. This is... Uh, Luke finding R2 and getting attacked and I believe knocked out <laughs> after his little fight with a sand person and I think C-3PO is falling over always getting injured and of course I love this full page art here it's awesome. These comics are really cool. Um, this is, wow, I'm divided into chapters. I didn't remember that. Here we have Obi-Wan making his entrance, scaring away the sand person. And here is Luke recovering and picking up C-3PO, who is not missing an arm. Shows him the hologram on R2. Obi-Wan immediately introduces him to the lightsaber after a short and brief conversation. Luke tries out the lightsaber. Cool art there. And old Ben, as Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen call him, uh, getting Luke sidetracked into an adventure, the last thing they want for him. 
That's really nice. Uh, sharp chiseled image of Luke. And here we've got uh, Princess Leia. And she, I think, is being interrogated. Luke uh, encountering the Jawa transport land cruiser, I believe it's called, but um, sees that they've been hit by stormtroopers and unfortunately killed, leaving him little time as he's quickly aware of to get back to his family where the stormtroopers would have been led to. And here we have Grand Moff Tarkin and Darth Vader and some others on the uh, Death Star, I believe. Back on Tatooine, these are not the droids you're looking for. Obi-Wan uses the Force, where he's convincing the Stormtroopers that these are not the droids they're looking for, and they wind up going to the Cantina, where they are encountered by galactic criminals. At the scene where Obi-Wan uh, ignites his lightsaber and cuts the arm off one of those, Wanted Galactic Criminals. Who, where, let me see if I can find the line. Uh, I wonder if it's in here, but they say they're wanted in so-and-so sectors or something like that. I can't find the line. But, uh, Obi-Wan quickly showed them what for. And here we've got our introduction to Chewbacca who uh, I think had already spoken to Obi-Wan and told him that he and Han Solo might be able to help them. And of course they start talking about uh, the Millennium Falcon, the Bucket of Bolts, that is one of the fastest ships the galaxy has ever seen. So we've got some artwork here of them at the table. Um, and they uh, are discussing arrangements, I believe, to be transported off the planet by Han Solo and Chewbacca. And then here's the scene. Oh, right, right after. I was wondering where this fits in. But right after... Uh, Han talks with Luke and Obi-Wan about providing them transport. He encounters Greedo, who shot first, but Han says sorry for the mess as he leaves Greedo's remains sitting at the cantina. And here we've got the Millennium Falcon. We've got Obi-Wan and Luke. Uh, kind of wandering outside, um, Moss Eisley there, and here's Han encountering Jabba right after killing Greedo, his henchman, and Han has a way of sweet-talking Jabba the Hutt um, after losing money on lost goods for uh, Jabba the Hutt. He sweet-talks him into this new deal he's gotten with Obi-Wan and Luke to make a lot of money for Jabba. And now we're back on the Death Star with Darth Vader. And here we've got the Stormtroopers encountering Han at the Millennium Falcon. It's a pretty cool artwork of the fight here. Um, and Han takes off with Luke and Obi-Wan being chased and is some interesting artwork uh i guess those are the star destroyers taking off after them and shooting at them as they make their grand escape and here we're on the in the cockpit of the Millennium falcon <laughs> immediately what sticks out to me is i think that's c-3po saying i forgot how much i hate space travel or maybe that was obi-wan i forget C-3PO is always complaining, so here we are on the Millennium Falcon. Um, 
looks like they're kind of going up like something here, I believe. Yeah, right here, strap yourselves in. So there they go, in a very dramatic fashion. C-3PO grabbing the console there, and R2 beeping away. And here we are in Chapter 3. Uh, it's the Death Star, and I believe that is Alderaan, and you have Leia saying that it's a peaceful world. They have no weapons to defend themselves, and Grand Moff Tarkin is asking for the last time, where is the Rebel base? And another favorite planet of mine is mentioned here from Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and that is Dantooine. Um, and Leia right here is mentioning Dantooine as a fake rebel base, uh, giving it as a tip to the um, Grand Moff Tarkin here, trying to distract him with a false lead to the rebel base of the planet Dantooine. But uh, you have Grand Moff Tarkin saying you're far too trusting after she told him that and destroys Alderaan. It's pretty cool artwork there, the planet being exploded. Obi-Wan here, sensing the great loss in the Force, says, as a million voices cried out, and they were extinguished, I think is something along the lines of how he says that. And here we are. And they um, are coming out of light speed. Oh, here's the uh, famous match between, I think it's R2 and Chewbacca, kind of like playing space chess. And, uh, R2 is winning, and then C-3PO tells him you might want to let him win uh, if you want to stay in one piece, more or less, is how he says that. And uh, here we go with uh, kind of interactions on the Millennium Falcon training uh, droid that Luke is playing around with. Uh, he's got his lightsaber out um, and then puts the helmet on. And I think there's an interaction, too, where Han is saying that he doesn't really believe in the thing called the Force. But uh, then Obi-Wan helps Luke uh, put on a mask, or a helmet, really, a blinding helmet, and use the Force to connect to his environment. And uh, he actually starts deflecting some of the laser bolts from the droid without even being able to see it. As I think right here, stretch out with your feelings, Luke. And boop, he starts deflecting them. And here we have the Death Star. And Obi Wan and the gang are encountering it in space. And this is not a fight you can win, Mr. Solo. And he says there are many alternatives to fighting. They get tractor beamed on. And this is where she lied to us. And they destroyed a planet. Um, already in response to Leia. And they find out that Dantooine is not the rebel base that she said it was. But now it can matter. They were going to destroy Alderaan anyways. They're bad people. But um, here is Darth Vader and the Imperial soldiers searching the ship. Of course, the special compartment Han Solo has for smuggling where they're hiding out. And I'm loving the art here already, but uh, Chewbacca thwapping a uh, Imperial officer and they make their attempt to infiltrate the Death Star after killing a bunch of stormtroopers that were searching the Millennium Falcon, putting on their uniforms, and actually I wonder if they killed them. I'm sure they killed some of them. That laser bolt, but I don't 
think that would have left them unconscious. They're putting on the uniforms and they separate as they go their separate ways. I must go alone, everyone says. I think we're actually down to last few pages in edition one of the Star Wars comic, but here we've got artwork from them infiltrating the Death Star famous scene here where Han Solo's kind of kicking his legs up and uh, they're just kind of figuring out what to do on the Death Star. Um, forget where in this comic they find out Princess Leia's aboard, but that immediately becomes their mission to rescue her and Luke. I'm trying to find the line because I love it. That he convinces Han Solo to help him uh, because he would get a boatload of money from Leia is more or less how he says it. Here we've got a uh, glimpse of more sections of the Death Star with stormtroopers walking around. I'm sure that uh, Obi-Wan's lurking in the background making his way around. Oh, and then here, uh, oh, I guess Han Solo and Luke have, uh, chained up Chewbacca, um, and they are transporting him around to make their way around the Death Star as if they have a prisoner, and then a fight breaks out when they get to the deck with Princess Leia as they begin making their rescue attempt. This beautiful artwork. Look at that. Imperial officer getting shot in the back. Pretty cool. But uh, here we've got them working their way around the deck and they encounter Princess Leia where Obi I mean, not Obi-Wan Luke famously takes his helmet off after Leia says Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? And then they quickly realize that Obi-Wan, or Leia realizes Obi-Wan is with them, and that she might stand a real chance of escaping. And here they are, fighting outside in the hall of the deck after rescuing Leia. And that is it for edition one, but it says the adventures of Luke Skywalker and company will continue in our spectacular Star Wars uh, treasury <laughs> number two on sale in October. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you must not miss it. And here are some advertisements which are really cool. And some of the photographs of the movie itself. And, you know, I apologize, I wish these were in better condition, but it's showing up just fine right now. But this is artwork on the back of uh, Star Wars, the Marvel Comic Edition 1. And I hope you guys enjoyed that.